the notice of intention for the proposed city of Erion, North High Line Y, area Y annexation. At the conclusion of this hearing, the boundary review board will determine whether it is necessary to extend the hearing to January 10, 2012, which is tomorrow night. Would the executive secretary please call the roll? Yes. Uh, Michael Marshan? Here. Charles Booth? Here. Much closer. Right, we couldn't hear anybody say Much they were closer. here even. Following the testimony, can you hear me now? No. Uh, uh, following testimony, the board will make a decision on the proposed action. The board's decision will be based on the record consisting of the file of written materials, testimony that you have given tonight, and exhibits offered at this hearing. The Boundary Review Board is required to base its decision on several regulations and guidelines. Specifically, the Board must consider RCW 3693, Section 170, the factors, and Section 180, the objectives. This is the state law that creates and guides the Board. These factors and objectives are printed on your agenda. The Board's decision must also be consistent with the State Growth Management Act, with the King County Comprehensive Plan, and with the plans and policies adopted by the applicant, which is the City of Erie. I'd like to ask the Executive Secretary please to give an overview of the project. Thank you. In October of 2011, the City of Burien filed a notice of intention with the Ballot Group Review Board proposing the annexation of approximately 2,045 acres of land known as the North High Line Area Y. 
This annexation was proposed under the resolution method pursuant to RCW 35A14. The city adopted the resolution for annexation in order to support orderly logical growth of governance and provision of coordinated public services and facilities to the North Highline Y area. The city has also planned for an election in order to provide for citizens of the North Highline Y area to vote to join the city or to remain in unincorporated King County. In conjunction with the transmittal of the notice of intention, the city invoked jurisdiction seeking this public hearing before the board in order to provide citizens with an independent venue for assessment of the notice of intention for the proposed North Highline Y area annexation. The area is located immediately north of the city of Burien and is generally bounded on the north by the city of Seattle and King County. The city of Burien forms the southern boundary of the site. The western boundary is formed by the city of Seattle and the eastern boundary is generally formed by the city of Tukwila and Highway 99. At this time, I'd like to ask the board members if there are any members who have a conflict of interest, such as a personal interest or professional involvement, which might affect your ability or the perception of your ability to fairly hear the proposal at this time. Will you please so indicate for the record? Have you had any ex parte communication with any interested party while this matter has been before us? If so, please dispose, dispose that information now. If anyone present has reason to question the ability of any board member to hear and judge fairly under the doctrine of appearance and fairness, please say so now. I'd like to ask our legal counsel to describe the process that we will go through this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Bob Kaufman. I'm an attorney for the board. I'm going to go over some of the ground rules that we'll be following this evening, and then we'll actually start getting to the important part, and that's listening to what you good folks have to say about all this. Um, the major purpose of this is to take public testimony. If, in order that everybody can be heard, we're going to follow the following procedures. First, if you'd like to speak this evening, we ask that you please sign the roster that's out on the table. Obviously, if you've already signed it, you don't need to do that again. If any of you have any exhibits that you would like the board to consider, please turn them into Mr. Holmes, who is wandering back and forth between the table out there uh, and right here. Um, if you do choose to submit an exhibit to the board, please keep in mind that the board has to retain it during the entire time that the board considers the matter, and it also has to retain it for the entire time that an appeal can be taken from the board's decision, which is 30 days from the uh, date that the board renders its resolution to hearing the decision. So we ask that you direct your comments to the factors and objectives that, that the Nevada Review Board is required to hear. There are sections of the revised code of Washington maybe you've heard the term RCW, 3693. There's two sections that are reproduced on the agenda uh, that was at, at, at the front of the, uh, at the table. And we'd like you to please direct your attention to the factors and objectives that are listed on those, because those are the areas that the board is going to be concentrated on in making its deliberation. We ask that your testimony be brief and non-repetitive. Uh, the procedure that we're going to follow is that the applicant, the city of Burien, will go first. They're allowed 20 minutes for their testimony their presentation. Following that, representatives of any other government agencies will each have 15 minutes to speak. Following the city and any government agencies, the board will hear public testimony from any community groups and indivi individuals. Each community group will have a total of 10 minutes for presentation. Individuals uh, speaking for themselves will have three minutes. We will continue this public, this special meeting and public hearing until everyone is heard. That will mean we will go ahead tonight and if necessary uh, to tomorrow. Uh, to ensure that everyone does have an opportunity to be heard, we ask that we each respect the time allocations that I've just mentioned. Uh, Mr. Holmes will be operating a clock that will time the testimony. He will hold up signs that indicate when you have one minute remaining to speak. We ask that you watch for those notices and respect the time limits so the board will be able to hear your testimony and that of others who wish to speak. We ask that uh, the audience remain silent during testimony. 
please don't speak out while the law for expressions of agreement or disagreement. As the chair had told me, this is considered a quasi-judicial proceeding, even though we're not in a courtroom and nobody's wearing a robe or anything like that. We all want to conduct ourselves as if this was a courtroom. Only the board may ask questions of the speakers. The time limits on the testimony do not include the time that's required to answer of any questions that the board might ask. If the board has any legal questions, they will refer them to me. Uh, following all of the testimony, the City of Burien will have an opportunity to, re, uh, to present a rebuttal for 10 minutes. The purpose of rebuttal is not to repeat everything that the City said in its initial presentation, but it's to give the City an opportunity to respond to whatever points have been made by others who have spoken uh, in, the case they, in the event that they have a different view of what was presented. Once the hearing is closed, the Board will deliberate and then make a preliminary decision on the proposed action. After deliberations, the board will then direct the staff to prepare a resolution and hearing decision based upon the entire record. The record consists of the testimony that we're going to take today, the exhibits that have been received prior to today and up through the close of the public hearing, uh, and any documents that, are, that have been submitted. We anticipate that we will consider the resolution and vote on the final decision at the board's February uh, regular meeting. Uh, this public hearing is being recorded verbatim. Transcripts are available for purchase. If you wish to purchase a transcript, uh, please speak to Mr. Holmes about that. Uh, because this uh, board is acting in a quasi-judicial capacity, the board members may not speak privately with any citizens during the time that it's reviewing this action. We're all in pretty close quarters here. It's inevitable that during a break, uh, somebody may accidentally bump into or come into contact with a board member. We ask that you not speak to a board member regarding uh, this matter. Uh, the, Board members know that their job is to only base their decision on what they hear when the public hearing is going on. And because they don't want to consider any information that's not presented from that podium and from that microphone, they're not going to talk to you during the break. And it's not because they're rude or not nice people, it's because they shouldn't talk to you during the break. Um, so, if there are, we'll now get to the point where I will administer the oath. If there are any individuals or groups that wish to testify, I will ask you to please stand if you are able. I can have a middle school on <laughs> We also ask that we, I will administer the oath to everyone who wishes to speak. I will remind them, you know, if you haven't spoken, to please sign the roster. That's the list of, uh, that we use to call folks up to the podium. So I ask you to please raise your right hands. We swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give will, will be under penalty of perjury, and that what you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask the Executive Secretary to begin the call to testify. Thank you. We'll begin this evening with representatives of the City of Burien, and please do come to the podium. I want to remind all of you, when you do come up to the podium to speak, to give your name and address, and to let us know whether you live in the annexation area, or if not, where you do live. Okay, Scott. Thank you. I'm Scott Greenberg. I'm the Community Development Director for the City of Uria. Uh, address 400 Southwest 152nd Street, Suite 300, Uria 98166. Uh, tonight, I'm just going to briefly review how we got here and a little bit about our timeline. Uh, those of you who were on the board when we came forward with the prior annexation might remember that back in December 2008, the cities of Burien, Seattle, King County, and Fire Districts 2 and 11 went through a mediation process where we agreed to cooperate and coordinate annexation of the North Highline Unincorporated Area. That agreement basically said that Burien could pursue what was called Area X, um, which is the area just south of the area we're speaking about tonight. And Seattle may pursue Area Y, which is the area we're speaking of tonight, by December 31st, 2011. So there was a deadline for that, uh, pursuing those two areas. This agreement expired on January 1st, 
well for this agreement, although um, we've acted in the spirit and, and the letter of that agreement over the past few years has now expired. As I mentioned, in April 2010, the city did annex Area X. In March of last year, 2011, Seattle, the city of Seattle adopted Resolution 31283. That resolution delayed the city of Seattle's decision on whether to move forward with annexing Area X until February of 2012. That, that resolution also stated that, that Seattle, quote, will not object or stand in the way, unquote, of a Burien annexation. So that's kind of how we got here tonight, is um, that enabled us, under the prior agreement, to proceed with annexation. If the board um, authorizes us to proceed with annexation, our current plan is to bring this to the voters of the annexation area in either August or November of this year, depending on timing. If the voters um, decide to join period, the annexation would most likely become effective in 2013. What I'd like to do at this time um, is introduce a few people from Burien who are here and who will speak to you. I will, however, note um, you may not know that there are no city council members in the audience right now. Um, the city council is having, Burien City Council is having their first meeting of the year, which began at 7 o'clock. It will be a short meeting, um, and we expect that there may be some council members showing up during the proceedings, as, as well as our city attorney. Um, so Chief uh, Scott Kimmer is in the back. He's the uh, Burien's police chief. Uh, we have Kim Krause, our finance director. And at this point, I'd like to turn the floor over to Mike Martin, our city manager. Thank you very much. I am Mike Martin, the city manager. Uh, our office is in Portland and Southwest at 52nd Street period. Uh, I wanted to thank you for again uh, taking time to consider this matter and Scott mentioned to me appear to report in four regards to the conversation with the area to the south. Um, we uh, had hoped to keep our presentations relatively uh, short and brief tonight rather than respond to questions that you may have. We have included a rather comprehensive packet that includes, for example, a full uh, financial analysis uh, that we're glad to uh, respond to. Uh, and as Scott mentioned, uh, my council is not here tonight because uh, many of them, several of them being sworn in tonight. It's the first council meeting of the year, and uh, it's a uh, council meeting at which uh, our new council is being sworn in. Uh, I wanted to I wanted to say that uh, you're probably aware that among all the issues that have confronted the young city of Fury, the city of West is 20 years old, there is probably none greater than the, uh, the questions of annexation which you participated in a couple of years ago and the one that's now before you. It's been a very divisive uh, issue. Uh, and yet it has been very difficult for my council. And we've gone through thousands of hours of, of discussions staff and the council. And uh, council arrived at the decision that it was time to advance this question to the BRB. It's something that we take uh, very, very seriously. It's something we've struggled over, it's something we've talked about with our community. And we've come to the conclusion that this is the, the right thing to do and the right time to do it. Um, so I wanted to underscore the importance of the question for us. It's not something we take lightly on something we um, we have discussed this with all of our partners, and very, very not know is unusual. Uh, in fact, we have a, a, a really large number of uh, special district partners who are water and fire. And I've made sure that we've stayed in close consultation with all of our uh, municipal partners, all of our community tax districts, uh, and going forward. Uh, and I wouldn't tell you that there's, that there's unanimity among all of the people who represent those special districts in terms of uh, our uh, wish for us to go But uh, by and large, there is a strong support for us to do so. I think there's some letters in the package that affect. I was anticipating one question for you, and it had to do with the, um, the activity that I'm sure you've heard of at the uh, state level regarding this, the annexation sales tax credit. You're aware that in 2009, the city of Seattle and the city of Huron uh, 
applied in the state legislature for a sales tax credit of not to exceed $5 million a year for 10 years to help support the annexation efforts in the area. Why? And just so you're aware. Could you speak into the phone? Sure. Sorry about that. Is that better? Yes. Great. Uh, I'm sure you're aware that, is that better? Sorry about that. I realized it wasn't so far away. Uh, that in 2008, through 2009, the city of Erie and the city of Seattle went to Olympia and successfully lobbied for legislation that uh, made us eligible for up to $5 million a year for 10 years to help support the state sales tax credit to help support the annexation effort in that area. Uh, you're, you may or may not be aware, I assume that you are, that whether that that sales tax credit proceeds is now a matter of discussion in Olympia at this time. And I would expect that if I were in your shoes, I'd be wondering why the same period is occurring before you now uh, in anticipation of, or prior to having that question concluded. And the answer is simple, there are two reasons. Uh, one, we want to communicate uh, an unwavering desire to go forward with this annexation, uh, that we're serious about it, and put a lot of time into it, and it's our intent to go forward with this. If the sales tax credit is present, we are hoping that it will be, and we'll, we'll see how that plays itself out. Uh, but second of all, there's a time issue. Uh, we know that we have to go through this process to advance an annexation, and we didn't want to wait till the uh, legislature concluded that the, this particular session is about 60 days long. So in theory, uh, they'll be done by the first part of March. It, it could easily be extended to some time in April, we don't know. And then to go through this process after that would put us perhaps in the summer and then we get into some time issues with elections. So I just I felt like that was probably something that would be asked and I wanted to anticipate that question. Uh, I'm going to leave that uh, as my testimony for the time being. I want to uh, make it clear that I'm more than happy to return and answer any questions that you have. Uh, Scott mentioned that we have staff here, our finance uh, director, our police chief, who would be glad to answer any specific questions in their areas if you'd like. Uh, and I'd be glad to answer your questions now before I sit down with you. Any members of the board have questions? No one does. I have to call a couple. Sure. Ms. Anderson? Did you want to ask that? Uh, yes, I'd like to ask a question of your police chief. The microphone. The microphone. There you go. Thank you. Wow, that was rather daunting. <laughs> yes, members of the board. I'm Scott Kimber. I'm the police chief of the city of Green. Okay, all right. <laughs> Is this better? Yeah. Okay. It is Scott Kimmerer. Chief Kimmerer, I've read the um, Burke draft study and the request for or the discussion about the need for police services for this area. And I noticed that there was um, a pretty large discrepancy between the number of staff that will request a police FTEs that would be requested under that study and the one that was done by the City of Seattle. The City of Seattle had approximately twice as many FTEs that they thought might be necessary. Could you address that difference? Absolutely. Well, first of all, you know that this area is patrolled by the King County Sheriff's Office. We also are a contract with the City of Pyramid. We have been patrolling this area for 100 years. Um, our staffing is based on uh, you know, history, it's based on uh, analyzing the number of calls for service, we have you know, formulas that we, we look at when we're trying to decide how much staffing is necessary. Uh, I don't think that you would find a municipal police department that would uh, ever say that they have too, too many police officers. And, from my experience, municipal police departments have a tendency to staff considerably higher than we do. Now that being said, we did a lot of, of looking at both the, the staffing in the city of Erie and how we analyze that staffing. Then we also have a baseline that we can go with as far as 
understanding the workload and, and how we have been able to deal with crime issues, public safety issues in the city of Marion. And we just took that into uh, the North Highline area. So it's when we look at staffing in, in area wide, we are looking at something that is higher than what is being staffed by the sheriff's office now. But it is also something that we feel is realistic, knowing what the crime trends are, knowing what the crime problems are in that area. And then I think if you look at surveys that, that have been done in North Highline over the years, uh, that people are pretty satisfied with the King County Sheriff's Office as their service uh, in, the, in that area. So uh, I can't tell you exactly why Seattle came up with a considerably higher number than, than what we did, but we gave a lot of thought and looked at it and analyzed it and feel that the service that we were giving to North Highline is something that is, uh, is workable and, and also providing public safety. Are there any other questions? I have one more. Okay. More, actually, um, you may not be the right person to ask this, so which of the, whichever of the staff from the city feels that they would be the right one, please take the podium. Um, I wondered if part of the difference in the study was because right now you are using the court system King County, Burien, does Burien have a municipal court system? No, Burien contracts with the King County District Court. And I wondered if those figures had been factored into that work report. Uh, I'm not sure I understand that. The question. cost for going through the court system, filing, having representation, all of those. Hi, Kim Carl's finance director. Uh, the court costs for the city of Burien are included in the finance department budget in the Burke report. Great. And as long as you're here, could you tell me why this is a draft report and not a final? I believe it's just a discussion draft for the city council. It is our final report as far as the financial analysis. So you do not expect any additional financial analysis or any change in the figures from this report? That's correct. Thank you. Ms. Anderson? Did that gentleman represent the No. This gentleman this gentleman is the city manager. No, the other gentleman. No, she, she's the finance director. This the the the, the uh, Bergen Associates was the financial consulting firm that uh, did this report for us. They did the uh, report for the city of Bureau, and there was some confusion over the, the, whether this was a draft or final report. It was the final report. I understand that, but my question is, are they going to be represented tonight? Are they speaking tonight? They are not, but my finance director, Kim Cross, is well familiar with that report. In terms of the uh, <clears throat> police officer, the chief of police, in uh, your analysis of the possibilities of the incorporation here at the service level, for those uh, individuals residing within the area A, uh, are you looking for any kind of uh, upgrade, improvement, or whatever else in that area? Because I noticed in all the reports there's a very interesting comment about the level of uh, compliance and so forth within the area. What we looked at as far as our increased staffing for that is, is an improvement over what is currently staffed there. Um, we also have uh, City of Burien, although we're still the sheriff's office, we have a different policing philosophy. Uh, you know, we, we take our direction from the city council and city manager, you know, what our priorities are. And so, yes, we are looking at increasing the staffing that currently exists in there. Uh, and also probably uh, different uh, ideas as far as our service, what, what we're going to focus in on. Chief Kimmer, um, I believe the report said right now you're expected to add 23 police officers, FTEs in the annexation area. I, yeah, yeah. 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 Can you tell me how many you have now serving City of Burien? Um, city of Burien currently has 24 patrol officers. Uh, we have a total of 41 commission officers working in, in the city of Burien. That includes detectives. We have a gang unit. We have property detectives. We have uh, 
for lack of a better word, narcotics detectives. Uh, I have specialty units that are problem solving uh, detectives that just go out and look for high crime areas and, and so forth. So we were looking, I believe, at an additional 15 patrol officers and then adding and, and, and enhancing our detective units uh, and including, we have a storefront officer currently down at Boulevard Park. The storefront officer in, in White Center would also be included in that, in those ads. So. Uh, and then one more question. Are you able to speak to or summarize the different types of crimes that I can talk broadly about it. Uh, I did get, I was going to be at the council meeting too, so I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for that. Uh, historically, over the last several years, the crime rates in Burien and Whites in North Highlife, sorry, in area wide, have not been that different. They haven't been, you know, if you looked at you know, how we rate crime is, is per thousand crime rates. We do it for part one crimes, which are more serious. Part two, which are more the property crimes in those uh, areas of concern for the community. And if you looked at those numbers per thousand, they were, they were generally very close. Uh, since our annexation, those numbers have changed uh, a little bit. And uh, I think the last I did, I had three quarters of this year. I didn't have the fourth quarter of 2011. But, you know, just as a comparison, the part one crime rate was 46 per thousand in area wide. It was 40 per thousand in the city of Burien. Uh, the only thing that I noticed that was a little bit, a little bit higher were there were some violent crime rates so that if you break those out, they were they were a little bit higher in North Highline area wide than they were in the city of Burien. And again, our property crime rates were uh, higher in Burien than they were in North Highline. It's if you try to bunch it all together, they're about the same. If you start really looking at the, at the minutia of it, there's differences. Uh, and those would be areas that we would look at and uh, target uh, if, if this if the annexation would be Will you reconfirm my math is okay? I went today to the King County Sheriff's Office website, mm -hmm. and the annexation area is patrol area K. They have 2010. I, saw, I looked at 2010. In that area in the 2010 statistics from the area found the same trend. Okay, so it would be, yeah, about. if you're talking about what the districting is, yeah. there you have King 1 and King, and King 7, I think, are the two areas that, that would be area 1. And that include, goes from uh, the White Center area down to the Park area. Good. What else? Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thing is that uh, we, we felt like it was, well, I'll just leave it there. 
Well, I mean, the reason I ask is because this is a built-out area um, that it's a first-tier suburban area that, that the trend is all, all over the, the uh, in other metropolitan areas as well as Seattle, that, that those areas actually lose population. So I was... Um, and, and we saw a bit of that phenomenon. Uh, so it is built out, although the, the population there has been remarkably stable for the last couple of decades. We saw it dip slightly, and that was the result of a uh, uh, housing authority property being redeveloped, so it lost you know, a couple thousand uh, residents and expected to come back up. But we, we really don't think that that population is going to fluctuate much up or down. Um, I also had a question about this, the year 2016, it's, it says full recovery in 2016, where that, that date came from. And, and again, uh, we don't want to pretend that we have any better information than the best economists that you'll find out there. Uh, it seems reasonable that that, we, we looked at all the best economic data, we, we looked at all the trends throughout the state and the nation, and that was our, again, a very conservative date, but that was the best date we could come upon. But I, I can't tell you for sure. I wish I could tell you for a fact. I would all be invested in my uh, predictions, but uh, we did feel that that was fairly conservative. Thank you. Any other questions? If I might have the finance director to have a couple of minutes. Any of your exercises this evening? Did you all um, take a look at what might happen if the sales tax option goes away? Was that one of your scenarios? Uh, it was not. I can answer that question. Uh, I can tell you with absolute uh, finality that if the sales tax credit, the $5 million isn't present, uh, we won't annex. It doesn't pencil. And my council's been very bad about that. And, Let's make no bones about it. It just uh, it wouldn't be financially viable. With the sales tax credit in place, it is uh, very much financially viable. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, oh, I'm sorry. One more, Mr. Booth. What happens once the ten-year uh, period is over? And you lose that. There's a. Uh, uh, our city, the city of Burien, like, any, like every other city that I'm aware of, has what's known as a structural deficit, where uh, expenditures generally are greater than the revenues. Um, the structural deficit that, is, that would include the North Highland area wide if we were to annex it is about the same as the one that we have in the existing city. Um, we have a strategy that just continues to push that out farther and farther and farther. In, in the simplest terms, we would like to think that we, our activity up there would cause that area to grow to the extent that uh, sales tax, property values, and those sorts of things would increase um, to the point where it would cover that structural deficit. Um, and you know, the best, somebody asked me that question just recently, and uh, one of the things that I can point to is that if you look at the existing city of Burien, in 1993, it very much resembled what is up in uh, the White Center area now. If you look at it today, you would see that it's a, it's a lot different and it's a lot more profitable than it used to be in the early 90s. So uh, we would hope that we would, by bringing the same focus and attention and development to that area, that we would have a similar result. The next person to the podium is Karen Freeman, please. Thank you. Good evening, Chair Evans and members of the board. My name is Karen Freeman, and I'm here representing King County in tonight's proceeding regarding the proposed North Highland area-wide annexation to the city of Burien. King County supports the annexation of the North Highland Potential Annexation Area, PAA, known as area-wide by the city of Burien, and we appreciate the city of Burien's work on this issue. The county believes that the annexation is consistent with the county comprehensive plan, the city's comprehensive plan and is consistent with the statutory criteria that the Boundary Review Board uses to make its decisions. This northern portion of the larger North Highland annexation area encompasses roughly 60% of the total PAA that we've been talking with you about for several years now. 
As we know, the city of Burien successfully annexed the southern portion of the, that larger PAA known as Area X in 2010. This board, the citizens of, of this PAA, the cities of Burien and Seattle, and fire districts 2 and 11, and the county have been working for years to pull together governance transition options for the residents of North Holland to consider, and this proposal in front of you, we believe, advances that work one step further and we're supportive of it, and we look forward to the board's decision in this matter, and we thank you for your important and thoughtful work. I can entertain any questions. Board, any questions? Since you've been working with the fire departments, perhaps you know the answer to whether or not the fire departments have reached an agreement uh, in regard to the annexation. I do not. I do know that, that there have been discussions taking place, and I believe that there are representatives here this evening that um, hopefully can bring some more light to that issue. Well, their exact statement is that they uh, respectfully request that the Battery Review Board approve the annexation with the condition that the North Island impacts be addressed with appropriate annexation, pre-annexation pre agreements. So you, you're not aware of whether or not they're in existence? I'm not, but I do know that there are discussions taking place, and I do know that it's something that um, I believe it's resolvable. <laughs> Make sure. I am aware of, uh, and I've spoken as recently this afternoon with the uh, police chief of both District 2 and 11, and uh, they, they haven't negotiated a pre annexation agreement, but they would intend to uh, if this annexation went forward. They, fully, they understand that they're required to do that by law. If really, they fully expect to do that. I don't see that as an impediment. Yes, um, as the board knows, much of the fire district issues are highly prescribed in state law. so. Um, and we have a good history of working together on these issues. So I'm very confident that we can come to an agreement. Although it's technically not the county's role to participate in that. Do we have any more questions? No, I don't have a, a question. I just have a general comment. And with all due respect to the city manager, we, we appreciate your input and want your input. If you could please wait until the rebuttal to respond to a question more than one minute before the question. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for me? I have a clarification. Um, the uh, fire district said that they want that they would like to or they, they recommend approval with conditions. Could you speak to to the legal issues on imposing conditions before? It's often said that the power to approve it includes the power to condition. And for as long as I've been associated with boundary review boards, we've spoken about the power to condition. But I don't think, at least since I've been, and this is not a reason not to do it, believe me, but since I've been associated with boundary review board since about 1986, we have never approved a proposal with a condition. Anyone else? Ms. Freeman, um, I noticed that in several pieces of information that we got from the city, mm -hmm. they talked about the county being willing to help with social services, the funding of social services, and other funding issues. Um, could you speak to that? Well, as you, um, the board knows, you know, the county is a regional entity. We provide a host of regional services to all the cities throughout King County, and of course that will not change. Um, if you're talking about annexation incentive funding, um, that's a different thing entirely, but that is a very common discussion that we have, that we engage in, a negotiation we engage in with cities who are wanting to annex an unincorporated area. And Sure, those conversations will take place if the board approves this um, proposal. Are the funds still available? That the history with annexation um, incentive funding is that at one point, um, a few years ago, the county did create a reserve of um, 20, 10 million dollars, 10 million dollars um, for all of the annexation areas, um, and. Uh, it was woefully inadequate amount of money, but it's all we could uh, muster. And some cities did take advantage of that. The cities of Auburn and Renton in particular were able to move forward with proposals and receive some of those funds. Um, then the county experienced a pretty dire fiscal crisis, 
and the council, um, since none of the other cities had moved forward at that time with proposals, the county council reappropriated the money to help address our, our fiscal crisis. Um, that's when King County and um, a number of cities joined together to go to Olympia to um, lobby the legislature to get the state sales tax credit to incentivize the organizations. And that was a very successful partnership and we were able to uh, be successful with that proposal. But of course now, those funds may be in jeopardy, but we're working really closely together to try and secure those funds um, at a minimum for the proposals that are on the table now. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. I have been advised that there would be somebody here from a fire district, but I don't see anyone signed up if I'm mistaken. Come forward if you are from the fire district. Um, and have you been sworn in? I was. Okay, thank you. My name is Liz Giva. I am a municipal member of the Dark High Line Fire District. And I am here to give you a chance to speak closer to the Will this work? Okay, great. Okay. Liz Giba, G-I-B-A. You received a fairly lengthy submission from Mr. Smur on our behalf, and I'm here in an effort to make sure that you understand that the fire district supports the annexation but has some concerns. And the memo that you received focuses on the concerns as opposed to the benefits of the annexation. What I would like to do is just start by making sure you read the second paragraph of the submission. It says, the Board of Commissioners of North Highline Fire District support the proposed North Highline area-wide annexation. The Board's support is based on the fact that an annexation by Peoria will help to continue and may improve the levels of fire protection and emergency medical services for most of the 17,400 residents of North Highland. North Highland Fire District and King County Fire Protection District Number 2, which serves Peoria and Normandy Park, recently entered into a contract that allows the two districts to efficiently use and benefit from the employees and resources of both districts. Under the contract, key administrative staff now provide a single shared management structure for both districts. This agreement allows North Highline Fire District to maintain current service levels. This agreement is crucial to North Highline Fire District's ability to provide the levels of service that it's providing now. And we expect that the annexation would allow them to continue for most of the people in North Highline. There are two areas that are of concern. The sliver by the river, very small little area. It's our understanding and hope that the city of Seattle would be looking at annexing that, and that if there is a condition that you would consider placing, on this, that it would be encouraging Seattle to enter into a pre-annexation agreement so that we can be sure that fire service is provided and the future fire service for those folks is taken care of. Same thing with the Delta Marine area. That there, I think Seattle has had long-term interest in annexing and I believe Tukwila also. So those are the two concerns in terms of residents. We also have a concern in terms of continuity of employment for our firefighters, which goes to the issue of providing service and maintaining service levels. We expect that an annexation for most of the people in our highlight would at the minimum result in maintaining service levels and could improve them. Mr. McCready, did this speak to your question about the MOU? Yes. And the commissions. Isn't the sliver by the river closest to the city of Seattle fire station? Yes. 
Any other questions? Oh, the report indicates that there's some that the fire district owes some funds on the retirement for the firefighters. Yeah. Has that been resolved? No, there there's some issues that need to be resolved. Um, at our last meeting, Mr. Sir, who's our attorney, suggested to us that it's it's his opinion that there should be a cutoff of when a firefighter turned 50 and who the people were that were residents of the North Highline Fire District in terms of accepting responsibilities and that left one on Are there representatives from other government agencies here this evening? Thank you. Sorry. Seeing none, then we can begin with public testimony. And I will call first to the podium. Excuse me. Kay Parker. Good evening, board. Thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it. I'm Kathy Parker from the current Marion City. I've lived adjacent to the White Center area most of my life and taught at White Center Heights. I'm familiar with the serious social and public needs in North Highline. After paying my King County taxes for over 40 years, I come to you tonight asking for your reasoned decision based on accurate and objective data of the financial implications of Bury and doubling its population. We've taken our fair share by annexing Area X. With further annexation, you're asking the relatively poor city of Burien to annex one of the poorest areas in the entire county with some of the highest social and police needs. With our empty storefronts and modest income base, Burien can barely take care of its own, let alone another 17,000 people. Example, Burke State's Area Y will immediately need $10 million for streets and stormwater upgrades. They will take priority of over, over other projects, and yet after repeated requests for help, Buren continues to flagrantly dump approximately six city blocks of water at the crest of the steep and moving slope in the Eagle Park area because they cannot afford to fix it. Buren won't acknowledge the projected $77 million in backlog infrastructure costs in North Highline. While it cannot afford to fix a crumbling 50-year-old sidewalk running down the main street of 152nd, because they cannot afford it. Buren estimates 100,000 annually to take care of human services in Area Y, while Seattle has program models estimating up to $1.9 million to serve that same area. I am presenting to you tonight a petition with approximately 2,000 signatures from North Island and Burien residents against the original annexation. Burien continues to ignore our citizen outcry while annexation of Area X was approved by only 1,380 votes. More citizens have signed these petitions to oppose annexation than citizens voting for it. Please, please stop this vote until the following questions are accurately, honestly, and objectively answered in a final report. Number one, the true cost of providing police support to an area with the highest crime rates in the county. Read the recent Seattle Times front page on the federal and state drug bust in the North Highline area. Number two, the true cost of providing social services that the people of White Center deserve. Number three, the true cost of years of backlog capital improvements in X and Y with the plan to pay for them. Number four, require Bering to reconcile the differences of their dramatically lower projected costs of annexation against Seattle's incredibly higher projected costs of annexation. I'm just about done. We believe this annexation will bankrupt Bering and continue to foster the stagnation of X and Y for years to come. King County, SeaTac, Seattle, and Tukwila have stated they cannot afford this area. It would defy logic and good fiscal policy to say that Burien could. Thank you for listening, and I hope you um, take a look at these petitions and my statements. Thank you. Thank you. 
in advance of this hearing, we submitted a document and attachments to you listing out our concerns with the hearing application for the annexation of Area Y, as well as our concerns about the 200, about 2011 work report, which provides the analysis for the proposed annexation. We feel that this 2011 bird draft report is inadequate and in no way provides a current report on the economics of this situation. As you've heard, the King County Assessor has indicated that the property values in, in area Y have dropped by 17%. The assumption in the work report is they're going to continue to escalate by 2 to 3%. That means they're off by 19% in the report. We are requesting that a final draft report be written and this updated information on the revenues and the real cost projections for what will be required to provide services to Area Y occur before this application be approved to advance to, the, to an election. The estimate of costs of services is so completely out of line with regard to the figures from Seattle and King County in a number of areas that we have listed. These service areas are, for example, fire, uh, human services, legal costs, and of course, I know that you've read it because we included it in your packet. Uh, we are requesting that the board address these questions to the city of Union about these estimates for services. Number one, what reports and figures were used from historical King County reports and records to determine infrastructure Repairs and projected costs for those repairs area in the area line. Could we see those reports? Number two, were historical annual King County transportation reports consulted to determine the real costs and needs of transportation improvement in area Y? What were the years of those reports and could we see a copy of them? Number three, the BERT report states there will need to be new added space to a current city hall to accommodate new staff. The figure for that remodel project, equipment and furniture, seems to be very low. Could we see a plan for the remodel and the cost estimates that have been submitted to the contractors for the added space? Additionally, um, we have seen in the BERT report no evidence uh, in any part of the report that both, as it states in the summary, that the city of Green is committed and will improve uh, the quality of life for citizens in both areas, or even a commitment that it will be able to maintain the level of services and quality of life. There's, there's absolutely nothing in the broken report that covers that. Uh, additionally, a myth has been advanced to the citizens of Burien that the annexation of Area Y can stop the closing of two Burien small libraries. The city of Burien cannot control the King County Library system in what it elects to do. Both Burien and Area Y are overserved communities for library space, and I've attached documents for this from the library system that clearly states that. Um, also, the monies for the King County Library System will not, will, and the economics of it, will probably result in closures of this. Um, this has become a very hot button issue with the community, mainly because the City of Green has advanced letters that it's suggesting that until annexation is decided, nothing can be decided about this, when in fact uh, the, the library system has said it's overserved and something has to happen. How is it over Sierra Green has one library for 16,000 people. The rest of the county has one library for, for 36,500 36, people. Uh, we're overserved by twice the amount other areas of the county are. There's no way the model can continue to be maintained and sustainable, and it really is not linked to annexation at all. Could the board ask the city of Burien to provide a public relations plan for how it tends to de-escalate the situation about libraries, which in part it has contributed to? Um, additionally, I would like to say this as a representative group. The citizens who have come here to speak tonight, I think, have demonstrated real citizenship. It has been highly unpopular in the city of Burien for citizens to speak out about this. There have been pressures. Uh, essentially to silence citizen voice and petitions that have come in. 
So I uh, know that those of us who have come to speak will have a harder time the next time we request public information, a harder time the next time we might ask for a permit. Please respect that this is really an act of courage on our part to appear here today. Um, and we have attempted, and I, and I want the board to know this, honestly to secure this information, not bring you just a pile of questions from the city council and the city staff. And we have attended meetings, we have requested information, and have not been given open information. So if you now receive a series of questions and you're wondering why there's this huge snowball of them, it is not for a lack of effort on our part. We ask that you really consider this very, very carefully. Uh, the, the draft report in no way uh, addresses the real issues um, of this annexation, and we feel that the board should require a final report on this. Thank you very much for your time. Sorry, before you escape that, Jersey. Um, just for our own edification, can you talk a little bit about more about your group? How many how many members? What types of people comprise it? Just for curiosity's sake. Well, the, the the general membership core of this group was established from the people who signed the petitions originally. Since that time, there have been other neighborhood groups and individuals that you'll speak tonight, that you'll hear speak tonight about this. So um, in excess certainly of the petitions that have been turned up into at least uh, 2,000 people uh, have raised these points of these issues and have these concerns and have not been able to secure answers to the questions that have been put before you. Thank you. Yes, um, Evangeline Anderson. I would like to have you be sure that we understand you're getting your courage up to come here and speak tonight. And I'm sure that I speak on behalf of all of my board uh, fellow members that we are here to hear you and we don't want you to feel that anxiety. Um, you made reference to the 17% decrease in property values and that the Burke report used um, a 2% value from this point forward in increase in total property values. Um, just, and therefore there's a 19% discrepancy. Does, did your committee come up with a recommendation for either a percent increase or decrease annually of property values if we were to recalculate the property tax revenue from this point forward on a different value? I will tell you where we got the figures for um, for this for the 17% difference, the valuation, the drop, the significant drop in property valuation. It was included in your packet. I wrote as one of the members of this committee to King County and asked King County specifically to make a projection, and I think it's included in your packet of what would be the lost valuation to area Y in 2012. And Lloyd here had appeared uh, at the um, White Center um, community and had also covered um, the details of lost revenue in the entire area. And this is, this is how it worked out. He projected that um, they were seeing 17 to 12% drop in the two areas, area X and Y. And in Burien, they were seeing an 8.6 drop in valuations. And up in um, what would be considered West Seattle, that borders that area, a 7.1% drop. So all of the assumptions in the book report about how this is going to continue to increase by first by 2%, then slightly over 2%, and then up to 3% and make a full recovery are completely false assumptions about valuation and how, many re how much revenue is going to come into the city. And that changes the whole slant on whether this can possibly be revenue neutral. If that is a concern, did you have a recommendation for a forecast? I mean, would you recommend that the forecast be for continued declining property value? Well, I can, only, I can only say this other piece. I know that the city of Burien was planning on asking for another 1% increase. Based on those drops, it was not allowed by the King County's assessor to uh, put that 1% uh, 
increased in. Okay. So it appears, according at least to the projection that we can kind of assess it, this is a declining situation, not an improving situation. Thank you. What else? Thank you, Ms. covered 
under the RCW that the board considers. And I'm asking that the King County Review Board request that the City of Erie and King County provide responses or reports to answer these issues. If we get the final report or model and the dollar amount that the City of Erie plans to use for Area Y to run an animal control program, that will be equal to or better than the model the area has currently under King County Animal Control. King Erie established its own model for animal control in 2010. Since that time, it has been unable to run a successful program for any length of time that is run by trained animal control professionals, treats animals humanely, maintains an honest and transparent program on adoptions and spay litter, honestly reports kill rates and revenues and expenses, has sustainable clean kenneling program and works with continuous vet services. The current model has public health and safety issues for both humans and animals. Animals are languishing in their own wastes. The city knows that this model is inadequate and refuses to discuss it or provide any additional monies to improve the situation. If we get the final report in dollars, dollars amount that Burien plans to use for human services, the area wide. The current bird graph shows the city is only being provided 100000 for human services to area wide. This would result in this area getting less services than it currently has under King County. And like the animal control issue, when the dollars amount is not enough, we do not want the residents of area wide to end up underserved like the animals in area. For that reason, does the board request to see the written commitment agreement between Burien and King County? For all amount and list of services and agencies, King County is willing to provide human services to area wide when, when uh, not sufficient to cover the human service needs for the next 10 to 20 years in area wide. Does the Burien Human Services final report? model and dollars amount commitment for the 41 homeless people living in on the streets of White Center, as well as the model for the addition of a dozen homeless people living on the streets in Beard. Currently, there appears to be no human services dollars allotted for services to them in the birth draft, and they as a group are not mentioned. Thank you. Questions for Mr. DeMore? Mr. Booth? Robert Howell. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Robert Howell, and I live at 152 Portal 20th Avenue Southwest in the Now, uh, I've been a professional real estate professional real estate for over 15 years. And currently we have a serious stormwater problem in the shorelines and in the city of Erie. Repairs and improvements that have to be deferred to inadequately funded to remedy them. These problems have resulted in the degradation of water quality. These are the kind of issues that detract from the property values and these are problems in the sale of properties in these areas in this distressed time. The 2011 birth draft report has indicated that area Y has even greater problems and will take priority over stormwater funding and street repairs should it be annexed to the city of Period. I refer to RCW 36.93.70 item 2. Could the board be question the city of Erion to report a copy of one, the current stormwater master plan that lists the current required priorities in the plan for period <coughs> and how those would be put aside for the priority work that will be required in area Y, as discussed in the first report. A final study, to a final study report for stormwater problems, needed to be 
repairs and cost estimates for repairs in both area X and area Y. Three, a final report on the street grade conditions in area Y needed repairs and cost estimates for repairs in area Y. And four, a complete final capital funds report for the improvement needs in area X. And I have another item, but I will leave that. Any questions for Mr. Hall? Thank you, sir. John Rosardi.
Hello, my name is Carmen Rosardi, and I reside at 14620 25th Avenue Southwest in Burien, and John Rosardi is my husband. The city of Seattle has an area called the International District, but I believe the true International District is in Area Y. Area Y has a population that is rich in diversity and speaks at least 25 different languages. I'm very, very concerned that the needs of this vulnerable population in Area Y will not be served adequately if annexed into the city of Erie. Could the board please ask the city of Erie to verify its arrangements to provide for translator services that it is going to use for the 25 languages that need translation assistance in area wide. Next, could the board have the city of Burien verify its diversity plan for the significant population shift that would occur if annexation is approved? Could the board ask the city of Burien to verify the list of compliance officers that it uses for ADA ethics and equity? And finally, could the board ask the city of Burien to verify the rates of violent crimes, robberies, and gang activity that occur separately in area Y and the city of Burien? Thank you.